The past month has been a whirlwind for our crew here at THB. Look at him down. He's down right there. <laughs> the guys have been traveling and finding success in each state from Kansas, South Dakota, to Minnesota and Wisconsin. All right. Meanwhile, I've been bow hunting the rut back at home. And throughout November, we've found a handful of huge bucks, but getting them in bow range has been another story. There's certainly bad luck involved, but it doesn't help that I've made mistake after mistake this season. For example, back on November 1st, I decided it'd be smart to do a rattling sequence 20 yards away from our setup and my bow. Wouldn't you know it, I get halfway through the sequence, look up, there's a huge buck running right at me. So as you see here, I'm scrambling like a moron back to the tree, where I put my hand on my bow grip just in time to turn around and see a huge buck running the other direction. That was so stupid. Why did I do that? You zig, they zag, and that's just part of it. Go home, rookie. Anyway, I didn't go home. We pressed on past that debacle and had several other cool hunts, but didn't end up with a buck. That brings us to the tail end of the rut where Greg and I had this hunt on November 19th. All right, me and Gregster are headed in this morning about 35 minutes before shooting light right now we're gonna go in with the decoy and set up on the ground we've been driving by this spot as we've been going around hunting different areas and when we drive through here we often see deer just right off the road and it's kind of an overlooked spot I haven't seen anybody hunting here very much lately Ted's dad hunted here about a week and a half ago now and saw some bucks I think Ted went with him a couple of times other than that we're just kind of going in here on a hunch that these deer are going to be used in this area because there hasn't been any people here there's also some standing crops over here on the private next door and it's one of the few areas where i've seen standing crops in the last week with it getting closer towards thanksgiving right now i would think that those crops are pulling more and more deer every day me and greg are going to dive in there with the decoy and see what we can do with them try mm -hmm. not to freeze Big buck coming up with that doe, and then there was another deer bedded like 30 yards from him that I heard stirring around going over past him. As soon as he got up, this little buck came right out of where we were going to set up. They went back deeper into the public. I bet you they didn't go, but just a couple hundred yards, maybe. They usually don't go more than three or four hundred yards, so I thought, like they're going to be right in that ditch. Maybe we'll just slip down a little bit further here. There's deer. Young buck. He's cruising. After watching several bucks head towards this thicket, Greg and I decided to inch our way in there mid-morning and found a great spot for the afternoon setup. I don't 
know that there's another option right now. Unless we burn, unless we sacrifice that trail. And I've been seeing them come right out of that corner, so. It's just not ideal for cover. I don't know what else to do. Other than backtrack up there. There ain't a lot of shooting over there either. Yeah. That's the only thing that I'm thinking is that the ground cover is so thick in here that it may keep them from looking up as much. I might even be able to like stand on my platform and face this way. Yeah, you break hide. up your silhouette. Yeah. Right, then you're basically just hiding right behind my silhouette. It's like, what do you there's, do? There's never a perfect There's shoot. never a perfect setup, never. It's always finagling stuff out here. You're always giving up something to get something.
did he not walk down this creek? I don't know why he didn't walk down that creek. I have no idea. He had a straight path right to us. I started off grunting real soft to him just to let him know we were over here. And I know he heard it a couple of times and was he was intrigued by it because he started rubbing. He started making a rub and tearing up that tree. You can tell it's getting towards the end of the rut though. He's, he ain't got as much pep in his step as he would have two or three weeks ago. Dang it, dang it, dang it. He may follow Doe up out of there tonight uh, on the way out to these beans, I don't know. They'll break your heart sometimes. They've done They'll it break more. your heart. They've done it more than a few times this year already. I can tell you that. It's like two in the afternoon. Me and Greg just got set up in this tree. And as y'all just saw, as soon as we got up here, we had a freaking giant come in. I grunted to that thing and I thought he was gonna come right down this creek. You can see it right here. It's almost a perfect little runway and there's grass is all matted down where they've been down there using it. But he didn't, he didn't come in. We tried tickling the antlers together when he was up on that ridge. He, he was interested, but no dice. The idea behind this setup, we, we bumped a big buck with a doe this morning up there by the truck and they ran back in this general direction. So me and Greg, you know, followed in hot pursuit this morning after we watched a bunch of bucks cruising in and out of this general area. We got back in here, it was so thick that it was difficult to hunt on the ground. We wouldn't have been able to see anything or get an arrow through all the crap. And there's a bean field out here behind me that's on private. Me and Nick watched a bunch of does in that bean field the other night come out of these bedding areas that we're hunting right here. We got four or five trails right here in front of us that are leading out towards those beans. But that thing was just moving bedding area to bedding area midday. I think he, I think he actually came down to the creek to get a drink of that water because it warmed up today and that ice is melting in that creek down there. I tried grunting at him, I tried snort wheezing, I tried rattling, nothing. And we've got a perfect wind, he never smelled us. That wind is just going right here, right in this ditch behind me and Greg. So we ain't out of the game yet. He may follow some does up out of there heading towards this bean field tonight. Thought it was gonna come together, just didn't quite happen, but we're still in the game. So we'll see, hopefully some does just waltz right up out of that bedding area that he just went up into and he comes out in hot pursuit tonight. I just saw one of them big massive sides immediately was like, Greg, turn the camera on. Man, that was a big one. That was a no doubter. Oh well, I'm gonna shut up and be patient. We got a long time before dark. which is what Greg and I were worried about when we were picking this tree. It's pretty bare, it's just a telephone pole in here, but we were up high enough and the wind definitely helps. If it was a calm evening, we would have been toast, I'm sure. A lot of deer within bow range right here. If we would have been two trees up, we would have had that big buck in bow range. That's the difference though, was that all those does and little bucks, they were exhibiting your typical bed to food movement for an evening but he was moving in the middle of the afternoon, two o'clock, and he was going on a straight line between those two bedding ridges. 
I was hoping we'd see some does and he'd come back out behind them, but no dice. He said nothing. We'll have to fight another day in here, though, because we didn't book her. Either way, good, good hunt. Good hunt. Learn something for tomorrow or the next day. We'll be back after him if we can get out of here clean.